Um, right. Okay. So um, last lesson, we were having a lot of fun uh, looking at grids and things. Um, we've been drawing portraits, as you all know, um, and we've been looking at the uh, how light and shadow falls on the face to add uh, shading and things and make things look 3D, as we were just talking about. Um, and I hope everyone found the grid uh, useful as well for um, mapping out the uh, shape of the face and all the um, drawing out the contours of where all the shadows are going to go and everything else. Um, so we, we're going to carry on. I'm going to give you a bit more time to keep working on those things. Uh, if you've got another portrait um, going, then uh, you'll be able to work on that. Uh, now, I have got some other stuff that I want to show you today. Um, it's something I, I'm not sure. I might have done it once or twice in class before. I can't, can't quite remember. So uh, for a lot of you, I think it'll be quite, quite a new thing, although you might have uh, come across it before. Um, it's called redu reductive drawing. Um, and it involves using, uh, as I mentioned last week, it involves using a little bit of charcoal. But if you haven't got charcoal, um, it's, you know, you can still use a pencil to do uh, some of these techniques with. Um, and then when you do get some charcoal, you can also obviously you can try that out as well. Um, so what it involves is putting charcoal um, over the surface of your paper and then rubbing it a little bit so that it all kind of smooths out and um, makes a nice surface then to draw into. Uh, and what we actually draw with is not just charcoal and maybe a bit of white chalk, but it's also uh, we'll be working in with a rubber as well. So the, the word reductive and additive drawing involves... Um, involves taking away parts of the background and putting other bits back in again to uh, and darker bits indeed to, to make the drawing uh, work so um, we're going to go over to um, the little uh, room that I made just here so um, so last year yeah we looked at proportions and all that sort of thing um, and talked about that and how that all works We've also talked about how to draw things using a grid. If you remember, I drew this young chap here uh, and I've posted that online for anyone who wants to see it. It's also on the website. Uh, but this drawing, uh, you can see, is a little bit different in that there's already some charcoal uh, or grey tone in the background. And then some of that has been removed uh, where you've got the highlights on the shape of the face. Uh, and all that you see, you see here around the face the highlights have been removed so it kind of almost takes it almost adds tone right from the start and then it's a case of deciding how much tone or how little tone you need in specific areas to make uh, a portrait come out so this is an example of uh, a reductive uh, drawing you can see where the charcoal has been scribbled in um, or drawn into the back and then it's rubbed either with a kitchen towel, your finger. Um, I used a J cloth earlier today to uh, create a background. So you can remove um, er areas of the charcoal to make the drawing work. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to do a drawing from this little egg up here. Um, it's also based on this one. I'll have that on screen. So if you do want to, uh, you know, if you're kind of finished with the last drawing, then the thing to do is perhaps try this first. And then um, I'm going to also show you uh, how I would work into a portrait as well uh, using this technique, the reductive um, technique. All right. So we'll go um, over to the desk next and have a look at what I've got on here. So um, when it comes to doing this in a portrait, you want something that's got, as I've said last week, something that's got nice contrast coming across one side of the face, maybe a bit darker on the other. So you've got these lovely, a whole range of really nice uh, tonal variations on your photograph. So that's, um, somebody did that one, I think, um, last week. And then we've got ones like this as well and this and of course the boy would also be a nice one to do all right um so this is as far as i got with that one 
obviously I haven't finished it all, but um, so on this one, we're adding tone into areas and then using the rubber just to sort of uh, exaggerate the highlights a little bit later. Um, but on this um, egg one that I'm doing, um, we're using the charcoal on the surface before uh, we remove the highlights. So I'm just going to show you how I would do that. So the type of charcoal that's quite good for this, um, it doesn't matter too much. You can use this more dense, um, uh, dense um, compressed uh, charcoal, which is this one here. It's more, it comes in, uh, it's like a square shape, this one. But um, this, the thin, sort of very brittle charcoal, um, is known as will is willow charcoal there's another type i can't remember the name of it at the moment um, but what you do basically is you build up the surface with the tone first of all you don't need to press um, too hard because if you press too hard um, it can um, ruin the kind of it can kind of go too far into the uh, grain of the paper and be harder to rub off so um, i'll just start off then by putting some on the surface here I won't do the whole sheet I'll just do a little bit as the demonstration here and you put it down on the surface so I'm not pressing too hard here because it's almost like a dusty surface if you like that we're creating of tone and then I'm using my fingers just to rub it all in and then you can keep going until you've got the right kind of level of tone that you want on here so there we go i'll add a little bit more over here so you can use any paper really um i used a bit of watercolor paper earlier but this is um Kind of really soft cheap uh watercolor paper that i've got on this one as well so it's got a bit of grain to it a bit of texture on the surface but um normal sketchbook paper also be absolutely fine so and then you can make some areas a little bit darker if you want to you can use a kitchen roll if you don't want to get your hands dirty or too dirty i should say I'm quite enjoying rubbing the surface with my fingers. OK, so I've got a surface that I can work into. It's quite dark now. Um, so what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to add uh, a few tones uh, to this so you can see how the equipment might work. So I'm going to draw. You might not be able to see this particularly well. I'll just come in a bit closer. Switch cameras as well. Maybe you can not see me for a minute. All sorts of bits on my desk. Right, so I'm just going to draw a line of squares or rectangles. One here. So the first one, I'm going to keep the middle one kind of a mid-tone. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the charcoal on the surface in this area. I know the boxes aren't particularly clear. But um, I'm going to put some charcoal in this area to add one tone, like that. And then I um, can use the condensed charcoal and apply it a bit heavier. So basically the condensed charcoal is kind of a bit thicker and a bit heavier. And it's certainly more uh, robust in its... Um, in it not being, if you see what I mean, uh, snappy. Because this stuff is really brittle. The willow charcoal is really brittle and will just snap quite quickly. Now, um, I talked uh, about putty rubbers last week. So this is a really squidgy putty rubber. The ones that I had before are a little bit cheaper and a bit harder, which I, I quite like it as well. Um, but this one is really kind of malleable and soft so i'm going to miss that one out area and i'm going to go straight over here and add a little bit of a lighter tone 
by removing some of the charcoal from the surface so the willow charcoal is out there so i've got a slightly different tone again you can change it and chop it and change it I could put some more charcoal on there if i wanted to get it slightly darker again the next one i'm going to press a little bit harder in this area to make it a bit lighter and the final one along here if you want to get even sharper um, highlights you can use uh like this is a really hard kind of uh rubber just here so i can really apply a bit of welly as they say and apply a bit of heavy rubbing on this surface and remove quite a bit or almost all of it of the charcoal <sighs> So you can see from this that you can go from really dark to really light with your charcoal by actually removing some of the surface on here. All right. Now, um, the exercise then when you get to it is to draw, have a go at drawing um, the egg over here. So and, and these techniques will apply when we come to doing a, a portrait and things. I'll just uh, flip that over. There we go. So uh, the first thing to do then, and I'll come back out again now, is to draw the shape of your egg. So be quite loose about this. Don't be too careful about it, because remember, this whole surface can be changed and manipulated as you're working on it. So there we go. There's an egg shape. Just like the one on the photograph and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to what i wanted to do is just start by removing some of the charcoal to add highlights in there so i'm going to just stroke the surface and take out the area that's highlighted on here so if i apply less pressure i'm going to have less of the charcoal coming out it does get really black on there so you know you can fold it and manipulate it just to sort of get it back to a cleaner bit you can tear it apart to make it work this um putty rubber is actually a faber uh, castell uh putty rubber or kneadable art eraser as it's called in here so we'll put that there like that Okay, so I've had a highlight here uh, now um, and you can see already the shape of the egg is starting to appear on the surface of the, uh, the charcoal and I'm going to add this bit of reflected light down here straight away. And then um, I'm going to have obviously there's a shadow out the back there so just putting that in. loosely uh, and if you want to be a bit more precise with your rubbing you can either use a cotton bud like this or this came with the set that i mentioned last week it's a, a little um, blending stick like that so you can see now i've got a little bit of a shadow but um, just towards the back of the egg, there's also a highlight. So if I put the highlight in around the back. And that helps the um, egg show up around there. And then I'm going to remove some of the front area too. And if I take off too much, I can always put it back. There we go. This is fun. Well, I like it. Right. <laughs> okay. There. So you can see how quickly you can start to reveal some of the image. Now, um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a little bit more of the shadow 
uh, darken it right down. So I'm using the willow charcoal at this point. So sometimes when you put the charcoal down, it looks like you've gone a bit mad, you know, you've gone a bit dark. But in actual fact, when you rub it and things, it does get uh, a little bit lighter. Or quite quickly. So I'm just adding a little bit in there. I'll probably have to add some more a little bit later. I'm going to go back into my shadow. So at this point, obviously, it looks quite rough, but you're going to smooth it off. I'm just going to use my fingers for that. It goes light quite quickly. And then I can go back into it, perhaps, with the with the heavier um, condensed charcoal a bit later. All right, and then I can get the harder uh, rubber or I can rub a bit harder with this to bring out some more of these highlights on here. Uh, I don't need a thick line around the edge of the egg, so I can take some of that out. And I use the harder rubber to add really strong highlight in the middle, slightly off position. By quite a bit of pressure and a harder rubber to that area. So you can start to see, I won't um, do much more on that just now, but I'll come back in a few minutes and carry on with it so that you can get an idea of uh, see how So we can do this on any subject. We do it on landscapes, we could do it on portraits, and so on. Okay. So um, I'll take you over to what I'm planning to do um, next. So I'll just remove that for a few minutes. So I thought I'd have a go at Morgan Freeman. So uh, if you, you know, um, what I've done with this for purely for speed is I've um, I've used something called carbon paper um, because I wanted this on the paper really quickly for today's lesson. So you put the carbon paper on the surface like that. You put your picture on top and you go over the line. So I'll just show you a little bit of that and I'll show you an alternative in a second. So you basically go around your drawing and it transfers straight on. Oh, sorry. You put your paper, carbon paper face down, drawing on top and then you can go over the top and it will transfer onto the paper straight off. So with a bit of looseness, I've managed to create uh, this in literally in about five or ten minutes. Um, now, if you're thinking, well, I haven't got any carbon paper, which I imagine a lot of you haven't, then what you can do, of course, is you can use uh, a normal pencil on the back and go over the back of your picture. Uh, sorry. Go over the back of your image or your printout like this and then if you put that down on the surface and go over it nice and hard uh, if you do it in the right area that is then you will get a very pale outline on there I need to press down a bit harder let me just do it again with a pencil that's working So the softer the pencil for this, the better. And then if you turn it over and go over it, you can see, well, you can't see it on there, but uh, well, you can just about see it, but you can see a very faint outline. So it's a very quick way of getting your portrait transferred. If, however, you think, oh, I need more practice with my... Um, with my grid drawing or my portrait drawing then please do that as well you know there's plenty of time to do this okay right so uh, I've got my Morgan Freeman and what I'm going to do is just what I did with the egg a few minutes ago is I'm going to apply a layer of um, charcoal over the top let's make Morgan Freeman a bit bigger oh, he's got an egg on his head hang on 
There we go. So I'm going to apply some charcoal over the surface of this. Um, so this is the scary bit because you're kind of scribbling over your work. It's probably why some of you might like to trace uh, the outline of your portrait like I've done. And remember, of course, that the uh, charcoal itself will um, get lighter and rub in. Um, if you're working on a table that's wood or like I'm working on this, which has got all scratches on it, you might want to put a piece of paper underneath. You can see some lines that I've got down here. Uh, if you want to avoid that, then the thing to do is put something underneath, like a newspaper or something like that. Okay, so here we go. So Morgan Freeman's appearing again. If it's not even or it's not dark enough to start you off, then just put some more on. Like this. And it is quite useful to apply a few layers anyway because it, it makes for a better uh, tonal ground to work on. And it's quite satisfying actually having done that. There we go. more down there there we go so the thing to do next is to start removing some of those highlights and shadows so I've already got the figure or the person drawn out uh, you know I've got all the outlines and know more or less where everything's going to go on this so I can start straight away taking out the highlights and then putting in some dark shadows which is what I'm going to do um, during this lesson to show you how it all uh, how it all comes together um, but I will just like I did with the egg I'll be removing some of the highlights and then I'll start working in with the shadows now with the set that I got and I haven't mentioned this yet um, so the set did look like this so it's got um the Derwent set it's got um, these soft charcoal uh, pencils and it's got white black and it's got this brown set here so if you do decide to go for those then you'll be able to experiment with those too if you've only got charcoal you can still do exactly the same thing so or if you've just got pencil you can also do the same thing because you can use the soft pencils to do what you need to do um, just bear in mind that the obviously the pencil the more layers you put on the harder it is to remove and it's pretty much the same with the charcoal anyway all right um okay so um so does that um how does that sound everybody um i realize you're probably all working on uh, what you're doing and everything you're okay there jackie that's good hi jamie hi everyone hello hi. hello govinda i was a bit late today <laughs> that's all right yeah did you catch most of it yeah 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 i thought you did yeah yeah that's okay then all right so, uh, yeah i've done this outline all right let me just uh go and find my uh go and pin you up oh yeah okay that's the girl that's sort of got the black tears yeah. isn't it yeah, mm -hmm. yeah 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 so do i need to dark her before i start doing charcoal darker the outline? um yeah a little bit i think you'll still see everything uh just make you know if you make the uh lines fairly evenly um dark and that you know not, you don't have to don't go too dark because you what you don't want is lots of heavy lines going through everything that you're doing so yeah just make sure that you can see it all nicely and you should be so okay. would that be better to do it with the charcoal or or a pencil charcoal would be absolutely fine because um Basically, the reason I did what I did with Morgan Freeman here is because, uh, you know, 
you can use the grid to get all your details and your outlines can't you or you know you can do what i did just for speed's sake uh and get the outlines like that i yeah. have these two there's the one carbon and one it says carbon and a charcoal so yeah yeah which one will be better uh <laughs> i would say well test them but I would say the charcoal soft. What was the other one? Carbon, did you say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think carbon's a little bit different um, from okay. my experience. Oh, yeah. Really so I stick with the charcoal to begin with because the charcoal you can manipulate a bit. Um, you know, you can soften it down, lighten it up, remove it a bit better. But um, yeah, it'd be worth just having a quick go on a scrap piece of paper and seeing, mm. you know, what, okay. what, the, um, what the other one does. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. All right, Jamie. Hello. I've, um, I've gridded up two pictures. Yeah. Oh, cool. I think Muhammad Ali is too light. Um, I can't draw him and I've made him into a monster. Oh. So I thought if I try the charcoal, yeah. maybe I could make him nice. Well. <laughs> I turned his mouth so wrong. But then I did that lady that you put on, which oh, is yeah. a lovely yeah so that that i would say if you've drawn the lady try that one first oh, i've only gridded it yeah oh right okay well you could try her first because um it's i mean if you want to you know obviously uh because you've got very very strong light and dark areas and it'll be quite it'll be quite nice to see that come out quite quickly whereas the other one has got lots of subtleties in it at the, hasn't it so yeah on the other one. I don't know what I've done. Oh, right. Oh, well, you can show me no, if you like. Please. Um, yeah, I, well, I was going to hide it. <laughs> I, I made him look awful, actually. Let's have a look. Oh, I don't right. know what I've done wrong. There's the picture. Yeah. It is something around his mouth at the moment, isn't it? I would say. I think it's his mouth, isn't it? I've measured his face. And... Yeah, the top lip, the top lip yeah. on him doesn't have any uh, tone on it compared to the photograph. Um, and then no, just look gross. And then <laughs> under his eye, under his eyes, the shadow under his eyes just needs. So basically, it's a case of again, like we did last time, is um, getting a bit more shadow in. Um, and then like you see on the it? well you see on the corner of his mouth um on the left hand side there's a bit more shadow around there so there's all sorts of little bits and bobs that you need to put in to help that work i think i'm going to leave that for now though yeah, yeah if you want to try out the charcoal um the charcoal because i've set, got the set oh yeah you did oh cool <laughs> yeah. I've had a physio. Oh, you did? Would you believe phone physios can hurt as much as physio people? Phone physios, oh my gosh. <laughs> it, it made you do things like, so it hurt, and I hurt a lot. Oh, yeah. But then there's five exercises to do, and I just laughed, because one of them, it says, uh, get a plank. <laughs> where, where have you got a plank? Yeah, you've just got a shed full of them, haven't you? The ones are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stick. It's all like exercises and three. So the plant just made me laugh. You've got to incline it and do your... Yeah. Anyway, my daughter's brought me privately to see somebody properly tomorrow. Oh, good, good. Well, I've I got hope... to do that for three to four weeks. Yeah. And, you know, I sort of dread getting up and the whole day, really. Yeah, Has well, I hope I hope before. it gets sorted for you. Has it been propped up with this proper frozen shoulder? No, I nobody, you know, how can they tell what it is really by a phone I was a physio for thirty-eight years. I treated millions of frozen, <laughs> and there can be several different things under the guy's frozen shoulder. And if it's a proper capsulitis, which is what a proper shoulder is, exercises can make it worse. So mm. I. Good, thank you. Wait until you've seen someone who's actually going to look at you rather than just give you something to do over the phone. Yeah. Thank you very much. I needed that. I, I would I would have said that because it must be very difficult doing that over the phone. 
<laughs> and I said to the man, he was very nice, but I did say to him, you know, it must be very hard. He said, well, after six months, you get used to it. I thought, well, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's get on with the charcoal. I just thought the plank was, I thought I've got a laugh as I cry. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll go for the lady, but. I'll go over to my, uh, put my desk on now. Thank you very much, Jamie. That's all right. So um, if you um, if you feel inclined, ladies, have a go at um, have a go at trying the egg little egg because it just gives you it is a nice introduction to using this technique. I'll be back in just a second. Sweet And can you mute because all we can hear is your scratching, please? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, all we can hear is scratching scr 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 in the background. <laughs> I will. Okay. Thank you, darling. Oh, a bit wet out there. Right, so um, what I'm going to do is start removing some highlights. Yeah. <clears throat> the nice thing about these putty rubbers, the soft ones anyway, is you can squeeze them and pinch them into nice shapes and that. 